Well done. Well done. Yeah, we just sort of talking. One of the things that I yeah, I got acquainted with in the bush in Australia. Uh, I sort of placid myself. I'm still, I'm still Catholic. Uh, hang on, it's got to get better. <laughs> <laughs> I just only, only for one reason, because my mother was so wrong on everything in life that if I die and wake up. Uh, and I hope there's a heaven because just for once I'd hope she's writing something. You know? <laughs> but, you know, I mean, people said, I, I was lucky, I dodged the bullet. Although, uh, as, the, as these reports are coming up, the court cases are coming up, people said, did you know him? I said, no. Did you know him? No. I said, but they're all on my mother's, they're all on my mother's uh, Christmas card list. But, yeah. but it's not easy. But what used to happen in the old days, uh, the, the, each count church out an Anglican church or a Catholic little church, no matter how small they were. And I know in the Catholic faith what used to happen, in the, even in the small towns, you'd have three or four priests. And they'd go out into these areas because the transport wasn't like it was. And they used to take, well, we had all Irish priests and uh, they used to sort of live in our place. So I was the favourite. They used to take me out. And in those days, I mean, if you wanted to go to Holy Communion, you had a 12 hour fast. You couldn't eat for 12 hours. So if Mass wasn't until 10 o'clock up the bush, you know, the last meal you had was at 6 o'clock the night before. So by, you know, 11 o'clock after Mass, you know, you were pretty hungry. But I notice now, when you're going through, the churches are still there. Uh, but they're, they're all gone, you know, they're, they're, they're not used anymore, I think. This is called Whisper Creek. I came upon a country church I knew from years ago and go back to my childhood and watch the memories flow. No one ever, no one ever comes here now. The tombstones, they stand guard over a congregation that lies buried in its yard. Father Riley drove me here to serve on Sunday Mass. First he heard confessions while I taught the altar class. You could hear the cries of children playing hide and seek. But when they were marched inside, you never heard a squeak. The men all huddled as a group and talked about the royal. In fresh pressed suits, their skins stumped clean of a hard week's sweat and toil. It was a Christmas country then, the bush it seemed to thrive, or through the worst that nature could endure, all managed to survive. Ma Bailey played the old time hymns, would bellow every word, and a muffled cough from Chenny could now and then be heard. Afterwards at breakfast, the best of country fare, to break the long communion fast that left our bellies bare. Well, Father Riley's long since gone, his brogue will no longer hear, a voice that often made us laugh or sometimes quake in fear. He sleeps in eternal peace, far from his native land. An empty church for all his work is hard to understand. And at midnight, when all is calm, and a pale moon rides high, the old priest falls, calls his flock again above the she oak sigh. The ghosts, they all assemble, to their pews they quietly creep, for they have never left this church on the banks of rocky cliffs. Christmas Creek. The old church is silent now, its crows the only sound. It stood the test of flood and fire, for it stands on hallowed ground. But time has passed the old place by, the faithful have all gone. But in the church at Whisper Creek, the spirit lingers on. I'm going to finish with just, I, uh, as 